Today's video focuses on the military implication of Indochina standoff covering border geography, vulnerabilities and force posturing. It also covers maritime orientation and comparison of air infrastructure. To start, let's look at thousands of kilometers long line of control between China, Nepal, India and Pakistan. And we begin with the Mount Everest and go west along the lofty Himalayas. This is the view of uh, China-Nepal border and it gives you uh, an idea on the difficulty and treachery of the terrain. Very high mountains ranging from 20,000 to 28,000 feet and deep gorges, virtually no infrastructure to move large scale forces and this terrain creates a vulnerability of the defender as well as the attacker, more for the attacker. Any terrain lost in the mountain will be very difficult to recover because Q requires enormous ratios, almost 6 to 1 in case you want to capture a high feature. Indian vulnerability of line of communication is obvious. Starting from Srinagar in the occupied Kashmir, it climbs up the Zajila Pass and moves very close to LOC between Pakistan and India which is marked in red. This makes it very vulnerable. From famous town of Kargil, which is shown here, it goes along the Indus River toward Leh. What we need to look at is the high features and gorges and vulnerability of any force moving along the road. It finally moves southeast towards Leh Baul, which is headquarter of 14 Corps and houses main supply base of Ladakh. Ladakh itself is vulnerable because it's surrounded by high mountains and can be easily trapped by three dimensions that is the Haliborn or Paratroops or a large force infiltrating across the mountain passes. From Leh to LAC between India and China, it's a logistic nightmare. As we go along the Indus to southeast, we come across important passes and bends like Mahe and Chishu. It also houses Pagong Lake, where China has made substantial incursions and uh, we also saw the two military commanders meeting at Chishu. As we follow Ladakh Ridge, we come across Tangste, Tarbuk and Shok village, from where we turn into Shok Valley of deep gorges and high mountains. It is important to mention Galwan River which falls into Shok River and currently both shoulders of this river have been occupied by the Chinese forces, however India is denying it. This effectively checks any move of India on road from Darbuk to Dalat Beg Oldi. Up north, the road turns to Dalat Beg Oldi, a small garrison and landing ground. On the west is famous Siachen Glacier along Nubra Valley, where Pakistani and Indian troops face each other. Strategically, this area allows physical coordination between Pakistan and China, both on ground as well as in the air, and that's what is giving nightmares to India. Let's have a look at the Indo-Pacific. Here we find the famous South China Sea and location of the country like China, Philippines, Vietnam, and Southeast Asian nations. Looking at the court between India, Australia, Japan, and US, it's funny, as no one shares any borders, and the size of the Pacific Ocean makes it a red herring. What most of the defense analysts in Pakistan are missing is the Chinese naval presence in the Indian Ocean and the Indo-Pacific. China has presence in Djibouti, Hambantota of Sri Lanka, Myanmar and a good coordination with Pakistan. They are also building an island in the Maldives. On the contrary, India is trying to bring in navies of extra regional powers into Indian Ocean. Indian defense analysts including some three and four star retired generals have been talking of four commands of Indian Army available against China. It's a bluff. Indian Northern Command, Western Command, Central Command and Eastern Command are primarily meant for Pakistan 
and can hardly spare any infantry and artillery. Same is true with the Indian Air Force. Out of 1700 aircrafts, it can only spare 4 to 500 aircrafts against China, who has almost 5000 aircrafts. So IAF with Abhinandan type pilots would be roasted in 24 hours. Some same defense analysts like Ajay Shukla, Lieutenant General H.S. Panag and Praveen Sani have already exposed Indian military and political leadership for losing precious time and loss of face in comity of nations. India was being projected by the West as an Asian pivot against China. Today China has shown to the world that India is a paper tiger who cannot defend its own territory. While the standoff may continue for a while, Indian stature in the region has got a sphere hit. No wonder countries like Nepal are standing up to Indian bullying. Can India afford a limited war? Well, war needs a real 56 inch chest and Narodan Modi has become a meek leader with feats of clay. China has achieved her strategic objectives without firing a shot. That's what is Sun Tzu's philosophy of war. Now come to what happened on 15th and 16th June. As the reports started emerging that Indian colonel and two soldiers were killed by Chinese troops in Galawan Valley, Indian military and political facade started crumbling. और हमारी फॉरेन मिनिस्ट्री का इसको बड़े आसानी के लहजे में कह देना कि साहब ये अवॉइडेबल था मतलब कि एक कर्नल बी जवान मर गए वह ऐसे ही चलता है साहब अवॉइडेबल था As of 17 June we know that India has suffered massive casualties 20 killed score seriously injured and many missing What lies ahead is anybody's guess India has been kicked on her face and her stature has diminished in the comity of nations.